guys. Um, today I think I'm just I'm still working on a few things, painting a few things, but just sort of picked up a couple of new models. Thought I'd just talk about that for a little bit. Um, what I've got is Got an armager Helverin. I've only just really put it together. Um, I haven't stuck any of this down or undercoated anything yet. You, know, you can see I've just sort of done some pretty generic basing and it hasn't even dried yet. Yeah, there's still some sort of wet glue on there. So, probably going to have to wait until tomorrow before I do anything with that. But, um, you know, I got, I got these new models because I picked up the, uh, the book, the codex for this army. And, yeah, I guess just talking about about the model um, and I wanted to show you one of the other models in my collection so what I'm planning on doing with this so I've actually got two of these um, and these ones are the sort of shooting ones you can see these big cannons here they kind of the arms move like that and they also rotate but it's, it's a bit tight the rotating um, probably get to work painting those this week but I like these they got these cool sort of striding legs you know like chicken legs or something Yeah, eventually this sort of glues together or magnetizes like I've done with some other ones and the model kind of looks like that Although it can sort of glue the guns so they point up if you know what I mean so now I'm leaving it loose so I can move them around and paint them and I might glue them, I might not I'll see how I go um, but yeah this is called an Armager Armager Helverin so I'll get to work on those soon to uh, break things up a little bit from painting the older uh, different type of model, different colours but I wanted to show you one I've done a little similar this is uh, an Imperial Knight which is like a big version of the same model um, this is one I finished quite a while ago actually, but um, yeah, what I've got here, you can see I've actually I haven't glued this one together. I tend to, if I'm playing with it, I just sort of push down on that bit. It kind of sticks. As long as you're not sort of tilting it around too much. Um, I just wanted to talk through some of the colours I used and um, and so on and I guess I'll show you some of the other things I've done like uh, this this is what's called a knight errant and that sort of means 
it's just equipped with these sorts of weapons. So this big, it's called a thermal cannon. It's like a big, uh, big gun that shoots a hot, hot blast. Destroys sort of things. Um, and then it's got this big chain sword, which you know, I think they're quite cool. Sort of giant, giant toothed weapon. Um, but I won't take this off now. But I've actually magnetized this arm um, so I can pull it off and put on a different arm to give it a different weapon uh, and the reason I won't pull that off now is I just took it off earlier and had to glue the magnet back in place over time the glue sort of goes brittle it needs to be reapplied one magnet I can show you is this on the top just there I've got a little magnet and on the base of this so this little weapon rack that sits on top of the, um, the model can just magnetize see it sort of sticks there and then you, know, you can wobble it and it sticks back but another thing I've done with it is the front of this should come off like that now I've stuck a piece of plastic sprue across the inside of this and a magnet onto that and a magnet on the back of this side so I can change the front because these things can have two different types of these are like missiles that stick out so if I want a different type of missiles instead of building a whole new one of these I can just use the other front so I don't know if that's um, something people want to try but it saves you having to get another one of these Um, as far as painting, the colour scheme here is sort of like a, a customised, just separate this, a customised uh, version of, I guess, one of the in-game army types. So... This is supposed to be from the, uh, the Hawk Shroud house. So in, with this army, these Imperial Knights, um, they're organised into houses. And the house that I've chosen is Hawk Shroud. But the colour is slightly different. The standard hawk shroud colour. I might even open this up. See if I can find it. So let's have a look at some of these colours. That's that's House Terran. All the blue and I like the designs that are painted on the shoulders of these guys. It's more, more house Terran. See there's a, there's a war glaive which is like my one, that's, there's a helver in there which is the new model I'm making. But this is the other version of it with this little chain sword and Thermal cannon or thermal spear. The 
I think this is House Raven. They got they got this cool sort of hazard hazard colour over the red. Or hazard pattern, which looks cool. Yeah, it's more house raven. These are just sort of choose your own. You know, you can paint them however you like if you want. More raven. Fighting against some orcs. Mm. See, I'm sure there's some hawk shroud in here somewhere. Some pretty cool, um, pretty cool designs on some of these models. A lot of opportunity to paint things the way you want. Oh, there's Hawk Shroud. So, I don't know if you can really see that bar. Let's bring it up there a bit. You can see the trim on the, um, on the armor plates is silver. I've done mine <coughs> in this sort of faded copper. Um, I didn't really like the silver. I wanted to paint some yellow models. I didn't have any yellow models from my collection, so I wanted to try something different. But yeah, I didn't really like the silver trim. So sort of yellow and silver and white. I wanted something to break up those light colours, so went with a darker trim. See on the legs as well. There's a lot of trim on these legs. All on the edge of those armour plates. I guess aside from that, that's probably the main difference between the standard version and what I've done. Um, but aside from that, I mean, I still haven't done anything with this banner. I should probably do some freehand there or paint. Um, put some transfers on there or something but to start the model off I painted the whole thing metallic and then washed and dry brushed it it's all pretty simple um, but the armour plates I did in a um, it's a yellow base coat I can't remember the name of it. Something uh, like a sun. Um, but even then I still had to do about five or six coats of it to really get it right. Maybe more. It wasn't that it was too thin. It was just I wanted a really sort of solid yellow. Um, and after that, after doing yellow um, base coat, I used this Dawn Yellow, which is like a, an edge highlight colour. And I did that sort of all along the edges of all these panels. You can see, I was trying to focus in on that one a bit. All along here, all along the edges, around these edges, the edges 
the feet, all the corners, and all these little rivets on the front. You can see on the top of the model, there's lots of uh, notch of edges with that yellow. Well, this model's a bit dusty. a bit while I'm here. Um, so oh, I can't remember the name of that base yellow. Avaland Sunset or something. Um, but by the time I've done all that trim, the, the base yellow looked quite dull. It wasn't a very vibrant yellow. And the trim really sort of stood out a bit. fair bit of it, I hope, because I'm going to need it on these new models, because I don't believe Games Workshop makes it anymore. They've replaced all the glazes with contrast paints, and while I like contrast paints, think glazes and contrast paints are the same. You know, they perform a different function. So, I do think contrast can be made to perform like a glaze if you really sort of dilute it. But you need to sort of get the mixture right. And, you know, it's not always that reliable. There's a lot of dust on the base. So, it's actually not that difficult to paint these guys, regardless of the fact that they're uh, quite a large model. I find painting these guys is, you know, is, uh, because it's one big model and not lots of the same model over and over. Aside from that, I've sort of gone with these uh, into alternating black panels. Um, so I guess with shoulders, I've got sort of black on the rear panel and grey on the right hand front panel with some edge highlighting there as well. And what really stands out for these Imperial Knight models is all the transfers, or freehand if you want to do it. 
But the iconography that you sort of put on these things really makes them stand out. I've got several of these and yeah, the first one I painted didn't have any transfers on it for some time. And it's really, compared to one with transfers, it's quite bland. You know, if you see on the legs, you've got transfers here and here. You know, and all over the shoulders and this shield on the front here. And you get these little purity seals and things. It's you know, quite an elaborate model. Another thing I wanted to point out was all of these. All of these power cables. You know, here. I've got cables running into the weapons. On here. On the back of the legs. I know these things are more like um, you know, conduits or maybe pressure hoses or something but if I wanted to do them as like they're you know holding energy in them and makes them glow so I did that with a sort of blue um, blue layer of you know, transitioning colour I don't know how well that will capture Maybe the light a bit, but you can sort of see. Yeah, you can see the blue pretty well there. Sort of breaks up the model a bit. There's not a lot more to it. Um, on the base, I just, I do the same stuff with all my uh, Imperial bases. So for people who aren't familiar with that, it's like if there was a good guy in, in this game, it would be the Imperium. I think everyone who knows the game knows there's not really a good guy. Um, and all my Imperial bases and the various armies I've got are doing this sort of colour scheme because, you know, if I want to put models from two different types of armies and from the Imperium in the same game, then they've all got matching bases. It's not a complicated thing, it's just pretty straightforward, but yeah, I just wanted them to look like they're cohesive. But this one, I've got these sort of leftover pieces of a, an old tower model and I covered them in a bit of grass. I wanted them to look like the sort of leftover parts from a slain hero or something who's, you know, overgrown with grass. Yeah, the piece here, some pieces here, and yeah, that sort of thing. And some of my other models, I've done the same thing. So, yeah, I just wanted to sort of show off one of the models I did. It's quite a while ago, but this guy, it's my, uh, one of my Imperial Knights. I've got three ones like this and a bigger one. Once I've finished these other two that I've just got, I'll have uh, four of four of these. I think that will be it for my Imperial Knight army. I can do lots of different types of armies with it, or combinations of models. And uh, yeah, 
that is that. Got a game coming up soon, so I'll be using this book. Yeah. So I guess leave me a comment if you'd like me to show you some other models. There's plenty there. And uh, I might get back to painting my older a bit more after I've finished building these guys. So, thanks for watching. See ya.